so there's that. Now, let's see. So now we go back to the beginning of this when uh, Michael actually asked me to come to the house to potentially do some writing with him. And so I go there, uh, and he says, write this song. Um, I want you to check it out. So uh, he plays a demo. And what I heard essentially was, you know, all the little bottles and all that. And ding, 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 ding. And, and I heard all that. And uh, the, the chorus, you know, all that stuff. I thought, this is really cool, you know? And uh, but then he said, uh, um, I just, it needs another part. So I said, well, uh, does that sound like him? It's pretty good, right? It's good. She's tripping. She's like, is he in the room? <laughs> um, trust me, I can't get him out of my head either. Trust me. I, he's just, Craig, Craig. <laughs> And he used to call me Gregory, Gregory, because my full name is Gregory. Right? It's Gregory. He used to be real country, you know. And they used to make fun of me because I could, I, I love breakfast. It's probably probably my favorite meal of the day. And back then I was like really skinny and I can eat like three, four breakfasts at a time. And they would all laugh at me. They go, oh, look at Greg. He eating all that breakfast. But um, uh, that's a side note. So anyway, he says, uh, that's true though. It was, uh, um, but he said, you know, it just needs this one more part. So I, I'm sitting there thinking, I'm at the piano, and um, so I think just for a couple of minutes, and then I came up with. <laughs> came up with. Ow! Right? <laughs> so. I came up with that, and this happened over the course of like, it was very quick, you know, because I was just, that just hit me, right? So I said, well, what do you think? He goes, it's, I like it. I go, yeah? He says, yeah. So now I'm thinking, well, we got the verse, we got the hook, we got the bridge, so that's pretty much it, right? Yeah, so I said, well, um, so you like it, right? He goes, yeah. He says, well, I said, well, so we, we I, you're good with this? He says, yeah. I says, well, so can I get a piece? And he said, yeah. Oh, yeah? He said, yeah. I said, so, well, what do you think? And he goes, what do you think? And I go, what do you think? He goes, what do you So this went on for like, <laughs> so now I'm like, you know, <laughs> the gears are spinning in the head again. I'm like, okay, all right, let's see now. Uh, now, look, you have to understand something. You guys today, you're very, very business savvy. You guys got your own labels. You know, you probably have your own printing presses. You got everything going on. You got, And so this is a whole different thing, and, and God bless you for that. That's great because y you, you should be. Um, but back then, I wasn't one of the smart ones. But anyway, so I'm trying to figure out, okay, now what? So I start off with, let's see, 50%? No, 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 that's, no, no, that won't work. Uh, 40? Nah, let's see. I'm talking myself down. This is all going on in a matter of seconds. So I'm thinking, okay, 30, 25? Uh, maybe, I don't know. Uh, 20? Eh, could be 15. Well, that's, so I finally settle on 10. 10%. <laughs> so I go, well, what, what do you think about 10%? Uh, he goes, okay. I went, really? He said, yeah. So I'm like, I'm like, I'm just, this is, so I'm just flying home, right? I'm, I'm like, this is great. I just wrote a song with Michael Jackson. This is so, um, you know, uh, some time passes, and I get something in the mail. And I open it up, and it's a contract. And the con I'm rifling through the thing, and it says my name at the top. Of course, they misspelled it. It, it, they, they, it, was, it was a T instead of a P. I didn't even pay it. I didn't even realize that. I just was like looking through the thing. And then I, I scroll down, and I see 10%. I go, it's in there. 10%? I'm in it. It's great. I'm just 10%. 
so I'm just, I mean, you know, I'm thrilled beyond belief. And so more time passes. And uh, then, you know, I'm at home one day, and I get a call from one of his managers at that time. Uh, it was either, his name was Fred DeMann or Ron Weisner, one of those guys, called me. I think it was Fred. And he said, uh, yeah, you know that contract? I said, yeah, listen, I'm just about to send it back. No worries. Thank you so much. This is fantastic. He says, well, not so fast. I said, why? He said, well, because Michael's been thinking about it, and he's kind of had a, he's come to the conclusion that what you did was an arrangement. So don't bother sending that back. Thanks for your service. So uh, now I I could have been I could have been one of those guys to go oh hell no, and I could have you know gotten a lawyer and I could have gone at him, um, because you know this was at by this point it was pretty late in the game and the uh, first pressing of the single was already done. But I didn't. I was deeply heartbroken, and uh, I, I, I let it go. Um, I don't know what you would have done in that situation, but that's what I did. I mean, I was young, and it was Michael Jackson, and I thought, well, I, you know, I don't have a chance. Um, and so I just, you know, I just ate it. I was very heartbroken, like I said, and, and, and that's what happened. But... Now, Quincy didn't realize. He he thought that I was in. He thought that, uh, um, uh, you know, the deal was done, and he was thrilled for me and and didn't realize it until after the fact. And he was upset, too, but, you know, he, it's nothing he could do either. So, uh, but just to show you how close I came to being a co-writer with Michael Jackson, I just happened to have... I just happen to have here a picture of the first pressing. Would you like to see it? <laughs> Can we get a close-up? Do you see this right here? Okay, watch this. Are you getting this? Yeah? You zooming right in there? Okay. <laughs> okay. So for those of you who can't, that's the thing right there. So for those of you who can't see, it says, epic. Quincy Jones Productions. Don't stop till you get enough. M. Jackson, G. Filling Gaines. Well, don't clap. Don't clap, because all I got is a picture. That's, I didn't get any royalties. I just, I mean, and actually, um, a colleague of mine uh, uh, actually gave me a, a 45, the actual 45. So I have it at home. Um, but unfortunately, that's all I got. So it's, uh, it's a, there's a lesson in there. Um, uh, and you can take it <laughs> for what it's worth. Uh, it was a, a tough pill for me to swallow, but on the other side of that, you know, I maintained a relationship with him and his brothers throughout the years. Yeah. Uh, you know, and the last thing we did together was uh, the 30th anniversary shows at Madison Square Garden just before the tragic 9-11, you know. But, you know, after everything I've been through with Michael being MD on his... Uh, uh, solo tours, you know, the Bad and Dangerous tours and all the stuff that I did with the brothers and all the years of, you know, relationships to culminate in that moment where I'm sitting backstage in the dressing room with the brothers at Madison Square Garden and I'm looking them in the face and I'm going, well, fellas, have a great show. Now, you got to understand that I never imagined that from being in junior high school Listening to, oh, baby, give me one more chance. You know, I'm, and that, thinking that was the most exciting thing since the Beatles. To be in a room with them as their music director 
telling them to have a great show. Do you understand the magnitude of that? And then to go to Michael's dressing room and tell him the same thing. I mean, it was it was uh, unspeakable, yeah. you know, unspeakable, joyous moment. So I lost out on one end, but, you know, what I gained, I don't think anyone can replace. <laughs>